Now, you may recall this time last year, we started doing concept sketches for the FZR project. It basically took about eight months and about 800 hours to complete the project. And there's the bike right there. We still have the concept sketches. We came close, made a few changes along the way, and that's the reason you make concept sketches. So what I thought I'd do today, it's, it looks like it's going to start pouring any minute out there. They're expecting thunderstorms. And while it's not raining out there, I want to get outside and do some photography on this. And I want to explain what I want to try to get done and what the process I've used to do the concept sketch, then do the sketching and come up with ideas. And you'd, you'd think it would be real easy. It's not. And I'm going to try to show some of the things I've done wrong and some of the things you can do to make it easier. So just for anybody who might be new to uh, watching videos that I post every day or almost every day, I try to take a project like the FCR restoration and go right from the concept sketch to the final part, the final actually riding the bike even. So it's, it's a long process, it usually takes a little less than a year, but in the end here's what happens. You go from a piece of paper to a bike that looks like this and by sharing the information I think we all win. But the first thing you have to do, and it's probably one of the hardest for me to do, I have to have something in my mind's eye, a concept, something that I see that isn't there yet, so I can put some pen to paper or some color or start envisioning what it's going to look like. Now on a motorcycle it's basically all one color, like the R1, this is pretty simple. As an example, if I wanted to change the color of the bike to red, I can probably do that with Photoshop. I can have John, John Pothier, help me. We take a color picture and then change the color. He can change it. I'm sure you can do it in Photoshop. You could probably even do it if you have an expensive camera. But of course, what I'm looking for is a custom, one-of-a-kind motorcycle. I don't want to have a twin. I don't want to have a triplet. I don't want to have three of them. I want to have the only one. And so I have to come up with the paint job myself. Now, in this case, it's a very simple paint job. I did a a ton of concept sketches, then a ton of work with the color, but the final result is we got this bike four or five years already. I think most people agree this was this was a nice rendition for this era bike. The West Cooley bike was pretty easy to do, a relatively simple paint job, but I had a picture in my mind. I didn't want to have a replica of a West Cooley bike. I wanted to have a one of a kind. And it really never was an eleven hundred. They were all thousands. So this became a unique bike too. So a lot of times in my mind's eye I see something and I, I, I envision it and I say like this fairing here. I ran over one day and just held it up on the RD and say hey I wonder if that, that didn't work. Or, or other things that you think color combinations that might look good or in this case some seats that we made and uh, different rims that we painted. But it all starts with what's in your mind's eye. And then to get that onto the motorcycle. The process I use is pretty simple and straightforward, but some of the things I can share with you may be of some value. So the first step is to shoot, in this case, maybe uh, oh, 20 or so pictures. On the, I call this the dominant side of the bike. Since the bike is always leaning to the kickstand 99% of the time, this is the side of the bike you would typically see, and it would be leaning at a little bit of an angle. So by having it at this angle, now I can do all my alignment of anything I want to make stripes that line up. I can get a vision of, well, for instance, if I wanted to make a piece of trim up here or have some writing or something up there, and then a stripe going up the bike, I don't want it to come down and then go... Getting everything to flow and to go into, a, into some alignment, or in some cases having a disappearing point where they all end at a point somewhere in the back of the motorcycle and then the most complex thing of all is if you're going to do curves to have those curves complement the bike and not take away from the styling of the bike assuming you like the styling of the bike already so one of the things I learned is if you shoot the pictures from too low the stripes might line up but then when you stand up they don't line up and the reason for that is if you look at the equator of the Earth, say the Earth is here and right in the middle is the equator. Now you turn the equator, it becomes a curved line. And that's what happened with the FZR. A lot of the lines that are in perfect alignment, if you measure them with a ruler, as you stand up, they don't line up. So I would try to avoid that. Now, 
The easy way to avoid that is just don't make any stripes that are supposed to line up. But in this case, we have a lot of choices. There's a nice flat area here, a nice flat area there. There's a piece on a tank that would probably look good. And of course, we're going to paint the lower fairing shiny black or some other complementary color. And one of the things I want to take into account is that ninja look. The ninja look of always having everything come to a point in the front or a hard edge. I want to complement that. So, in other words, I wouldn't want to put something on here that's not going to complement it, like an example, polka dots or checkerboards or something. This, this, the whole ninja theme is that they're all like folded paper, like origami. That's what makes the ninja a unique bike. So the other part of this is to come up with some color choices now because Kawasaki has always got various shades of Kawasaki and metallic green. Might want to include that, but certainly not limited to that. Since we have a lot of, I have a lot of ideas in my mind and I'm not sure which one three months from now when we start this is going to come to fruition. But as always, you have to start somewhere. So the beginning is, and this is a this is a day I wouldn't bother going riding. It's supposed to be thunderstorms and rain in about an hour from now. So I thought I'd get some pictures. I'll shoot some pictures and go down to the computer and load them up and hopefully get one I can use. In fact, I just felt some rain, so I'm going to put this guy away for now and get down by the computer. I just wanted to mention this was so difficult to do because what I had to do, of course, the bike has to be assembled and then run one piece of tape down to make this stripe line up and this stripe line up. But again, and then again, that stripe becomes like the equator as you lower the camera. Well, sometimes it doesn't line up. Sometimes it becomes that, that curve and, and it doesn't pick up the way it would in a photograph. Because on a photograph, you're dealing with a flat surface. And in a three-dimensional thing, a straight line on this, if I were to lay out a piece of tape here, it is now a curve. From this angle, from the side, it's a perfectly straight line with a ruler, but from the front, it becomes a curve. So when you're designing up that custom paint job, and this is why I like to start three or four months ahead of time, spend hour after hour doing concept sketches, and then think about what color I want to use. What colors in this case. Now the good news is that since this project is now finished, and I think it went for about 250 uh, episodes, and it w seemed to go on forever, but the end result is it has really been a very enjoyable project and a wonderful bike to ride right now. Just a total joy to ride it. And I have in my mind's eye what I want to do to the RD, assuming we have enough time to do two projects over the winter. But this is going to all hinge on if I can find a decent GS gas tank. Because what happens, a GS1100 gas tank fits right on an RD relatively easily. And then I can make a custom seat from scratch. So that was that was part of the plan too. But again, plans change. And as time is available and as we work on other people's projects, you never know where this winter is going to go. But it's still summer and it's raining. Now just looking back, and I have this for my own reference. These were two of the concept sketches that I did for the FCR project. Again, that project ran about eight months and a considerable amount of time but I think so worth it. But what happened, it all started with a lot of rainy days and this is exactly what we're going to do with the Ninja. We're going to take some really accurate, nice side pictures from the height that you would view the bike at. In my case, I'm a just average height person. Shoot a lot of pictures. Now one of the mistakes <clears throat> I originally made with this bike, and it's a, it's a mistake you have to take into account, is see this photo is too, I'm too low. I should have been higher. Because I lined up all these lines basically with straight pieces of tape. And then as you got up, they became kind of a little bit curved. Well, and I did some funny ones just to see, uh, you know. I, in the beginning, I wasn't sure if this was going to be, uh, you know, a Kenny Roberts look, the yellow. But the point that I'm making is when you try, if you start with this, this is a, what John Pothier did. He took the photo 
and just took the background out just to make it a little easier. Well, if you, if you don't have that ability, what I could do is I would take a razor and cut the bike out and then just put a couple pieces of tape on a piece of white paper so that this would stand out more. Now, I also have a bunch of, because Karen is an art student, a, a bunch of acrylic water-based paint that you can paint these pictures with. This worked out well for me. And I was really, I, there was times, and a lot of this got done on days, there was no way you could go riding anyway. But here's the original, one of the original pictures. And I just wanted to show this. <clears throat> I had seen, and I was looking for other ideas of people that painted the frame a different color and didn't like that at all. Then things that I could see right away where that was going, not good. And because this bike, we had to, we were going to replace this front fairing. I, w I w did not want to see the headlights at all. The headlights, by the way, are mounted inside the air scoops. And I just thought there's this thing, and it, if, you, if you only knew how many there are, there are a bunch of them. <laughs> there are a lot of these. There's probably a hundred. But anyway, I always think that here's what happens. At the end of this whole pile of paper, there's one sketch that I can use. And it, that's the sketch after a after hundred sketches, that's the one you keep on the wall for the eight, nine months that you're renovating the bike. So I just thought that's information worth passing on. So because it turned out to be a rainy day, I think I'm going to spend some time down at the computer and get a, get a little bite on how I want this project ultimately to work out. I'll ultimately get a picture that I'm happy with that I can send to John Poth here. And we'll start the process and be trying to share every step along the way. So hope you enjoyed the video and no matter what bike you'll enjoy riding, uh, no matter how you enjoy riding it, if you enjoy dirt bikes or touring bikes or adventure bikes or old bikes, new bikes, if you like bikes we probably will have a good conversation somewhere down the road. So hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.